Good morning. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, ma'am. Okay. Ma yes, good morning. Uh, so this is the first class of uh, microeconomics. So it's my duty that I have to elaborate the syllabus, uh, the content in the syllabus and then the uh, components like assignment uh, components that we are going to follow. Uh, so as usual, like I will just elaborate all these things. And if you have any queries, you can ask me at the end of, okay? Um, so to start with, I just want to show you the syllabus content. Uh, is my screen visible for you people? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. OK, fine. So uh, this is the syllabus uh, like microeconomics. Uh, it's it's uh, actually a very basic paper in economics. Uh, uh, so it will be giving you uh, the complete detail about uh, the basic concepts of economics uh, through which like you can understand how a consumer will be behaving in a uh, market. Like if you have an um, uh, idea of starting an enterprise, if you have an idea of starting your own business. This will be giving you some uh, basic idea about it. And in the same way, like uh, if you want to know your customers, uh, like uh, this, this is somewhat like a psychology study. Like it will uh, tell you like how these consumers and the producers, they are, they will be behaving in the market and how the market functions in an economy. So a complete detail, a basic idea about uh, the economy, like you can get to know about from uh, uh, microeconomics. So microeconomics is uh, one of the basic uh, paper. Uh, micro and macro, it is uh, very much essential uh, because like if you know micro concept and a macro concept, like you can understand the rest of the economic concepts. So, so these is the base. So here like uh, the course outcome is like uh, we are we are trying to make you understand the discipline of microeconomics. Uh, so you will get to know about what is microeconomics after uh, going through all uh, these content. And uh, like it will also uh, give you an, an idea about the general principles of how the market economy actually functions. So again, like, uh, uh, like if you talk about the market, like uh, there are different types of market and uh, these types are uh, like uh, divided based on the characteristics. Like if you if you know the characteristics and the types of the market, then it will be easy for you to uh, work on it. And uh, it is not again only for a business. Like uh, even any concern, you should know like what is that uh, prevailing in an economy. So for that, like you should understand the consumer, uh, the producer, the market structure. So for that, like we would be giving in a, a basic idea about like how this market economy functions, and then uh, like. Uh, yeah, as I said, like uh, you will be able to analyze how the consumer and the producers, they make decisions in uh, uh, various uh, angles and uh, you will be able to learn about the market structures and uh, the consumer's uh, decision on household hiring investment decisions uh, of the firm, everything can be uh, studied here and uh, this develops the skills uh, through which like you can use these theories and models in uh, analyzing the uh, national and international uh, case studies related to it. So based on that only your assignment will be there. Okay, like you will be relating it with the um, recent case studies related to these microeconomic concepts and you will be making an assignment on it. So the fifth uh, CO will be uh, fulfilled in the assignment. So this is what your uh, outcomes will be like. Basically, you will be able to know uh, the consumer, producer, and the market structures, uh, which will be giving you an idea about like what is microeconomics, and then uh, uh, how to apply it in the uh, real world. So this is the concept. So to start with, like you will be uh, given an idea about what is this microeconomics, uh, whether this economics is an art or a science. OK, uh, like there is always a confusion whether economics is an art subject or a science because lots of theories are there, lots of theories and laws are there which uh, which uh, proves anywhere like uh, it can be proved anywhere in any economy. So uh, so we call it as a science and there are lots of uh, concepts which is uh, uh, like which is having a characteristics of uh, uh, 
uh, changing over a period of time. So we call it as a, a subject of art. So we have to be trying to make an analysis like whether it is a, a science or art or what is this micro and macro and all. Then we will be going on to the theories. So the very second module actually, uh, it deals with uh, consumer behavior. So how the consumer used to behave so that we can see from various theories. So we have a ordinal way of uh, dealing it as well as an ordinal way of dealing it. One is like based on uh, our preferences. Uh, one is based on uh, like uh, our utility, the satisfaction that we are go we are going to get it. So all these are some somewhat like a psychological study about the consumers, how the consumers will be behaving. So we will try to understand all the concepts that is related to it. So when we talk about consumer, it is the demand. Uh, like they are the people who create the demand in an economy. So the demand concept will be uh, seen in, in a perfect way. And then comes the supply side. So supply side is a producer side. So as a producer, like uh, what uh, they will be doing and uh, how this supply is being uh, done in a society. So a point where demand and supply getting equated we call it as a market equilibrium. So we'll be dealing on market equilibrium. And then comes the elasticity. Normally every product, uh, uh, like uh, it is very important that we should know the elasticity of the uh, product. Why? Because only that will determine the price of that particular product. You know, like uh, certain price, uh, certain products are very costly, certain products are having uh, low prices. So why that variation is there? Uh, if you go and if you make an analysis, it is because of the elasticity of demand. So how the people is preferring it, like if there is going to be a changes in the prices, how much uh, we are reacting to the changes in the prices, that is what is elasticity. And uh, the elasticity of each product, uh, we have to analyze to fix the prices of those products. Uh, so likewise, uh, we will be seeing the elasticity. So the theoretical as well as the numerical part will be dealt here. And then comes the uh, theory of production. So in uh, production also, like uh, uh, we have lot many theories. There are a lot of laws as well as theories which is applicable everywhere that we will see. And after that, uh, we will see how a producer is going to get into an equilibrium point. Uh, equilibrium actually, like if you take in economics, it's a very important concept. Uh, why? Because like equilibrium determines everything. Uh, so uh, that point is very important. So wherever you go, like you can see this equilibrium. So there is a market equilibrium. There is a consumer equilibrium. There is a producer equilibrium. So likewise, equilibrium plays a very important role. So all those types of equilibrium we will be seeing on. And then comes the... Uh, when we have dealt with consumers and producers, the next one is the cost and revenue. Why? Because uh, producers, they are involved in a, in a business because they need a profit. And if they want a profit, that can be identified only through uh, the cost and revenue concept. So that is what will be seen in the next module. So we will see the various forms of cost and the revenues and how these uh, are changing in a uh, like what is their shape or what is uh, their characteristics in a short period as well as in a long period. We will see all these things and the relationship between all these concepts we will see. And then comes the market structure. So when I talk about market structure, uh, it has two different, uh, uh, like mainly two different market structures are there. One is perfect competition. The other one is the imperfect competition. So imperfect has uh, many other classifications like uh, monopoly, monopolistic, oligopoly, duopoly, likewise. So all these are like based on how many sellers are there in the market and some other characteristics of the products that they are dealing with, uh, we can classify them. So all these different forms of markets, how it functions, how the pricing and output are determined in these markets, all these things we will go through so that like when we finish this microeconomic concept, we'll be able to uh, identify a product in the different market structures and uh, 
we will know like how it actually functions in the market. So we'll be able to get a basic idea about all these things. So for that only we are having this microeconomic concepts. Okay, and finally the eighth model is uh, uh, like we will be having a guest lecture that I will arrange later on. Um, but this is what the syllabus is. Okay, so completely I have given you an idea about what we will be dealing with uh, this uh, microeconomics. So this is what microeconomics. We will be seeing lots of theories and laws related to consumer behavior, producer behavior, and the market market structure. Mainly, this is the thing. How the uh, like uh, the content will be like for that. Uh, like you will be having a doubt now whether it will be a theory or whether it will be having some numericals. Uh, that doubt will be there among you. So for that, I'm clarifying it. Uh, like it is a uh, like it is completely a theory uh, concept. All the theories and laws will be explained with certain assumptions and uh, there will be lots of diagrams uh, which will be representing the uh, theory or the law. So the with a schedule, schedule means a table. So a table which will be showing the <coughs> sorry, actual relationship. So if, uh, if you want to understand the concept, like all these things are very much important. Uh, so a schedule and a diagram and uh, an explanation. And uh, even before going on to the theories, uh, like uh, the schedule or the diagram, there will be certain assumptions. Why? Because uh, ec uh, like economic concepts, if you take like the, uh, it is not only one to one relationship. Like you cannot have, you cannot take two variables and just uh, uh, say that only these two variables are related with each other. So it is a multivariable concept. Economics, whatever that you go and study on, it is a multivariable concept. Like for example, if I ask you a question like what determines the demand of uh, you? Uh, like uh, again, like if you want to say like uh, how, why you demand a particular product or uh, why you want that particular product, like there will be a lot of concepts you will be saying. Like you can say that uh, you'll be seeing the price of the product based on that only you would be making a demand. Again, you will be seeing what is your income position, then only you can make a demand. And then your taste and preferences of the fashion that is prevailing in the economy. So it is not going to be the same. It will be changing. So as the fashion changes, you will be making a different preferences also. So likewise, uh, and then the price of the complementary commodity, substitute commodity. Uh, so likewise, like there are lots of concepts which influences the demand. So it is not only one to one relationship, it is a, a relationship with uh, multiple variables in an economy. So if you want to study uh, the relationship between any two, you have to keep the rest of the variables as a constant. Then only you can uh, uh, study the relationship between these two variables. So likewise, if you want to understand uh, many economic concepts, you have to keep certain concepts as a uh, static constant, uh, a concept which doesn't changes, and then only you can uh, really study or uh, understand the relationship between the two variables which you want to make a study on. So for that reason, only we have these assumptions. So all these theories and laws will be having all these assumptions, all these diagrams, schedules. So it will not be a general theory paper where a para para of uh, theories will be given to you to read on. It will be uh, it will be of a mixture of diagrams tables, explanations, assumptions, and the theories. All these things will be there. So that is one. And another thing is, uh, in some cases, like some um, uh, areas, like there will be applications also. Uh, but actually, every concept that we are having it in the syllabus, uh, we can have the application part of it. Uh, if it is a mathematical economics there, all these will be dealt with an application uh, point of view only. But here it is a microeconomics and that too. We are here just to produce a, a basic idea of uh, microeconomics. So for that reason, I will not be going very deep into applications. 
where wherever it is possible, I will see that I provide a application part for it. So there will be numericals also. Okay, so uh, demand and all, like when we talk about uh, elasticity of demand and all, uh, we will be having some numericals. Why? Because uh, uh, actually elasticity of demand, uh, more than the concept, the numericals is important. So there I will be dealing with some numericals and cost and revenue analysis also when we are doing, I will be teaching you some numericals. And demand actually, uh, demand forecasting, there are some numericals. Uh, so I will see that wherever it is needed, I will be using the, uh, I will be uh, teaching you the application part. So there will be some numericals also. So uh, I cannot say that completely it is a theory paper. It will be having some numericals. And uh, as I am interested in uh, mathematical economics, I take some of, uh, some of the numericals, even when it is not there in the syllabus, I will be teaching you some numericals because that will be helpful for you uh, to understand the concept in actual sense, in reality. As soon as that will be useful for you people to make your assignments. Okay, so for that reason, Yes, uh, there will be some numericals. And as I'm teaching numericals in the classes, I'll be putting some questions on it. So in CAT 1, CAT 2, as well as in uh, FAT, you will be having numericals. So that is also there. So this is what uh, the syllabus content is. And then uh, we will come to the components uh, assignments. Uh, so you know that uh, you have CAT 1, CAT 2, and uh, you'll be having a FAT. Uh, normally, uh, like nowadays, as it is in an online mode, uh, it, it will be for 30 marks in Kotandra. But uh, if they are going to change it, uh, because again, like we don't know what will be happening, no? So if there is a changes according to the changes, according to the norms of the university, I will also be working on. Um, but if there is no other changes, like you will be having CAT 1, CAT 2 for 30 marks. And there will be a fat exam for 60 marks. So that is the as usual, like what we are following these days. Okay. And about the other th three components that uh, we will be having. Normally, I go for two quizzes uh, and one assignment. So this is my way of uh, evaluate, evaluating. Uh, so the quizzes will be like immediately after your cats, I will be having my quiz. So after cat one, uh, based on the CAT 1 portion, I will be having quiz 1. And then the same like that, after CAT 2, based on the CAT 2 portion, I will be having the uh, quiz 2. So immediately the next week. Okay, like for example, if this week, if you are having CAT 1, immediately next week, uh, like we are having three classes, no? among the three classes, any one particular day, uh, I will inform, but uh, it's not like I will not uh, inform to you. I will be informing and then I will be having the quiz. But the immediate week itself, I will uh, conduct the quiz. Why? Because uh, you have prepared for CAT 1, so that will be helpful for you to do it. As well as, like, I don't want to drag it for a longer time. So, after CAT 1, based on the CAT 1 portion, you will be having quiz 1. And the same way, after CAT 2, based on the CAT 2 portion, you will be having quiz 2. So, likewise, you have to uh, quiz 1 and quiz 2. So the dates, uh, like we don't know exactly, but as I said, uh, if you know the CAT dates, based on that, we can decide on the dates also. And the assignment, uh, assignment after um, CAT 2, you can uh, submit it. Uh, after CAT 2, I will give some two weeks of time and I will fix a date for uh, CAT 2. Uh, why? Because like you can choose any of the topic from the syllabus. Uh, so if uh, if some of the portion is not covered, then uh, you will not you will be feeling um, uh, you will be having some discomfort in doing it. So for that reason, once I finish the complete portion only, uh, the date like the date will be fixed so that I'm giving a knowledge on all the concept, and after that I'm making new people to work on it. So that is my intention. So uh, always this assignment date will be after CAT two. Uh, like the second week after CAT 2, I will be fixing a date. So that date, I want you people to uh, finish your assignment. And my assignment will be like, <clears throat> you can take any of the uh, topic from the syllabus and that topic you have to uh, like, 
make an analysis on it so that analysis can be like um, you can take uh, you can take some data related to it and you can work on it or it can be like uh, you can uh, relate with some case studies of recent times uh, and then you can analyze it and you can present it so i don't want a very lengthier assignment uh lengthier assignment means like um, i don't want uh, 10 to 15 pages or 20 pages of assignment i hardly need a uh, four to five pages of assignment where you will be defining the concept first and then you will be taking some statistical data related to it or a case study related to it you have to analyze it and uh, from your perspective what you feel about it that you have to uh, write it as an assignment for example, I'm telling you, like if I'm saying, um, uh, if I'm taking uh, elasticity of demand as my uh, concept. So elasticity of demand is nothing but uh, the proportionate of uh, changes in the quantity demanded to that of proportionate changes in the price. That is, like when there is a change in the prices, what happens to the demand of that particular product? Okay, how far it is changing? Uh, that is what we will be seeing on. So that if you are taking the very first page, you can explain this concept. So what is this elasticity of demand and all. After explaining it, uh, related to this elasticity of demand, you can take some statistical data uh, that is like uh, in the real market, actually how was the consumption made? Like when there was a, a change, like what has happened, that you can take it, you can make an analysis and you can say like what has happened to the product that you have taken for the study and that you can represent it and finally you can give your own perspective whether you can prove or disprove the theories okay so there are lots of concepts in elasticity of demand so you can take any one point and that you can prove it or disprove it and again like normally we used to say that all these economic laws and theories uh, uh, that we are dealing with this uh, this will not be applicable for uh, a gold market it will not be applicable for a, a money uh, like we say that all these economic laws and uh, theories fails in a gold market as well as in a money market like if i make it, this is a statement uh, so that you can prove it or disprove it so for that you have to collect some data and based on the data uh, you have to make an analysis and then you have to say that uh, yes, the uh, theory is uh, proved or yes, the theory is disproved. So from your own perspective, I, I don't need anything taken from any other source or material. So that is what I mean actually. So like, likewise, you can take any of the concept from the um, uh, syllabus. Uh, if, if, you are, if you are finding difficult or uh, like, uh, uh, like I don't want a more of repetition of a topic, I will see that I can collect some uh, uh, data, like I can, I will collect some uh, uh, content from the syllabus and that I will provide to you. So from that you can uh, take it and you can work on it and you can make an assignment. So that we will see uh, elaborately uh, like in the later days. Uh, now it is the beginning, the very first class only, but I don't want to um, disturb you people. But yeah, this is what my plan is. I just want to tell you. Why? Because like it is mandatory that we have to explain you the uh, complaint, uh, the process that we are going to follow in this uh, particular semester. So that like you, you people can think over the add and drop process. So as it is instructed, I have given you the complete detail. Okay, so this is what the syllabus is. Uh, the syllabus I have explained and uh, my way of teaching it will be having numericals also along with the theories and the theories will be having diagrams uh, uh, like graphs or diagrams uh, tables and the explanations so all these are mandatory for me like while you are writing your exam uh, like uh, if you are not going to draw the diagrams and all i will be reducing the mark why because uh, without the diagrams, you could not explain the concept clearly to anyone. So I need the diagrams properly done. So without the diagram, I will not be giving marks. I will be reducing marks for it. I tell you all these things uh, well in advance. So it will be, uh, uh, this subject will be a, a numericals as well as a theory and a little bit of numericals will be there. 
and my components also like there will be one assignment and two quizzes. Uh, so all the things I have given. And regarding the uh, study material, all the things I will upload it uh, as right now I'm working on a like I'm working for NAC actually I'm not uh, having enough time uh, but I will see that even before uh, uh, like the cat one the complete uh, syllabus uh, materials I will be providing you all the word documents and uh, um, other documents whichever they had uh, with me like word document PPTs uh, PDF whatever that I'm having I will be uploading it uh, in the VTOC as well as uh, then and there like uh, when I'm taking the classes I will be showing some PPTs I will be drawing some diagrams and I will be explaining all those concepts that you can take a note of uh, but apart from this if you are very much interested in uh, learning microeconomics you can go and you can refer to uh, any of the microeconomics books why because it is a very basic theory and uh, all will be giving you the same uh, content only there won't be a vast differences in uh, uh, the content of uh, microeconomics why because it is not a, a very new theory where you can say that yes there will be a change over it is a it is a basic idea okay like when economics was uh, uh, merged as a subject like uh, i'm talking about 17th century when this subject came into existence from that period like this is what is microeconomics is so it is a very old uh, the basic idea about economics that is what we are seeing in microeconomics so there won't be any uh, vast changes you can refer to any of the books um, like you can to refer to microeconomics managerial economics business economics all these are the same only uh, uh, the thing is managerial economics means uh, lots of point will be seen from the managerial point of view business economics like as a business person uh, it will be viewed so that is the difference but other than that uh, all these microeconomics managerial economics business economics are same only there is no differences and uh, again the concept will be explained with different examples that's all uh, so some people they will be taking a very basic commodity like orange and apple and they will be explaining it and some people will be taking it as a uh, new like some new product they will take it and they will be explaining it uh, that is the difference but other than that the content uh, the basic idea will be the same so you can refer to any of the microeconomics book don't go for advanced microeconomics because advanced microeconomics uh, it will be dealing with the theories of distributions and all uh, that is not there for you people so your concept is a basic idea so just to go for microeconomics and a very simple book uh, of microeconomics or we normally call the bible of microeconomics uh, is given by uh, shankaran so if you if you have an uh, any idea of like microeconomics by shankaran you can refer which will be giving you a complete idea uh, he's a, a very good author who tells the concept in a very simple way where everyone can understand the concept so this is what the references is all about so i have given a just about what i'm going to do it in this semester for this microeconomics and now it is over to you like if you have any doubt or queries to ask you can ask me right now